Hi guys, I'm Hex Trojan, and you're watching Gaming Hexa. And back to Space Engineers. Um, the the hype on everyone's tongue at the moment is the whole planets thing. And uh, if I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't eagerly awaiting for planets and every update, I'd quickly check and um, be frequently disappointed. But uh, like everyone's been saying in their update videos and what have you, like, you know, the longer we wait, the better the teasers are getting, the teasers for the planets, you know, so I won't complain, the more work they put into the planets, then the better for everyone, because uh, we will benefit in the end with a, a better product at the end of it. Um, but that said, I was getting impatient, and I, I was thinking to myself, okay, when planets come along, um, I'm going to need some kind of a, a drop vehicle, a drop ship, something that can handle the G's um, and take off on a planet that has gravity that affects the ship, so that's, that's the explanation behind this, just a quick ship that I threw together behind me here. But then I thought, oh well I really want to use it, and uh, I couldn't really help myself, and I had been avoiding it to this point, but um, I decided that I would dabble in the source code a bit and uh, yeah so I decided to play with planets a bit right in their basic form mind you um, some do have a bit of foliage bare the bare minimum um, nothing like what you see in the in the um, in the teaser trailers for the planets, uh, this is just the bare bones. What the source code offers you with regards to planets. Um, I have doubled in it a bit. Um, this planet that we're looking at right now, I've just uh, loaded a an asteroid a custom game, and then I have uh, spawned in a planet. This planet in particular is about sixty odd thousand meters across. It is. Um, it is the uh, I haven't tried a 60,000 or 60 kilometer um, planet yet uh, the reason why I've chosen this one is because um, when I first loaded the source code up I tried for the biggest planet that you can do and the biggest it allows you to spawn is 120,000 <coughs> meters <coughs> meters excuse me and um, what I found was uh, when you're on the surface the size of the planet obviously gives you an indication of what the g-force is going to be at ground level and with a thousand and sorry 120,000 um, the g's you're looking at are 1.2 g's on the surface and with the uh, 50,000 meter one, you're looking at 0.5 G's, and um, so I'm, I'm guessing with that in mind, with a 60,000, it's going to be about 0.6 G's. Now that should be a nice balance between um, being able to take off from the planet too easily and not being able to take off at all, at all because this ship here now that I'm in could not take off of, um, or, or even not even by 12 inches off the floor. So um, when landed on the planet, so we're just going to go down, check it out, and see if this uh, guy is going to be suitable for what I'm going to use him for anyway. At the moment, I've just put it's just a couple of cargo containers and some reactors, but um, the idea being that it can be retrofit, or will be by me anyway. This is how it looks anyway. It's uh, very boxy at the moment. It's not really serve. It doesn't really serve a purpose, but. Um, it will do. You can see the large thrusters are facing downwards on this one, um, fixed to the body, just to see what kind of power we're going to need. So just just um, for the hell of it, what we're going to do is we're going to put a GPS marker here. And it's just going to be to mark where the asteroid field is up here 
and when we're down on the surface we'll be uh, we'll have a good indication of how far we've actually come to to land on the surface I'm gonna aim for the light area the Sun is moving I really should have disabled it but I forgot um, we're gonna aim for a light area just because it's uh, it'll be easier for us to see what's going on right and uh, I'm not gonna skip the video I'm gonna turn my dampeners off and also what I will do is There you are. Just so we can see at what range the um well we won't be able to see the range from the planet surface. I think it's about thirty to thirty-five thousand meters above the planet is when you start feeling g-force from the planet. Um which is a fair distance. That means that when objects are floating through space, if they become come within thirty thousand to thirty-five thousand meters of this planet it will affect their tra trajectory um, not massively because the first instance of gravity that you'll feel will be only like 0.1 uh, 10% of a G and it doesn't really have an effect even on the ships it does a little um, you'll see over in the left hand side there it says no gravity you'll see exactly when it kicks in it'll just be 1 G um, I'm going to pick up some speed here Move away from this. Oh, excuse me. Move away from this asteroid field. Let's get up to top speed at least, anyway. Is that the sun? I'm not entirely sure if it is. Um, I spawned just a planet. I didn't, uh, as far as I know, I don't know if in spawning a planet there's a chance of it spawning a moon or anything like that. I think maybe it's just the skybox. Um, and that is supposed to be the sun, though. It's hard to tell, but we are still moving at top speed, and I haven't have I don't have any speed mods installed. I do have a few mods installed, but that's just for the purpose of being able to use this ship. Um, and I did want to have a, a sort of a reference as to how long it sort of takes. We've come 17,000 meters, almost 18,000 meters from the roid field, from the asteroid field, uh, and we're still about, I'd say we still have, we're only about two thirds of the way to the planet, if that. I think by the time we reach the surface, we'll probably, we'll, we'll be about 40 to 50,000 kilometers, maybe away from there, as a, as a guess, maybe 35 to 45. So, just amend our trajectory here. You can see we're at 0.2 G's, which means now that obviously the planet is pulling down on us.
I think for this area over here. Nice little green patch. Yeah. If indeed that is the sun, we have it in the middle now. I think it's setting. Yeah. We are now 28,000 meters away from the asteroid field where we spawned in. We're entering the atmosphere any moment. Now, there's no um, environmental effect or anything as to the passing through the atmosphere. Um, well, that would be cool if there was some kind of uh, maybe glow or heat, not heat damage necessarily, although it's, it's a possibility from entering at such speeds. Right, we're inside the atmosphere. Nice little glisten off the ground there. Almost looks like it's water, but I don't think it is. We're at 0.6G now, which I think means we're getting fairly close to the surface. You can see the dark, we're sort of in the twilight zone of the planet at the moment, and we have this weird graphical effect over here caused by the, the atmosphere that is around the planet. I'm going to go forward a bit there, I believe my dampeners were on. Now, if I turn my dampeners off, you see we fall faster towards the ground. Um, I don't want that. I'm going to try and st stay in front of the shadow cast by the sun. Although it looks like I'm going to be racing it. We have a kind of mountainous range over here. We're going to head over in this direction and take it down. We are 38,000. So yeah, I think if we had landed back there, then we would have definitely um, been about 35. Right, I'm taking it down. I'm allowing it to just slow itself down and take itself down of its own momentum. If I take the dampeners off, it is gonna plummet. We don't want that to happen though. I can't really see where the ground is. You see it's very glitchy, the texture. Hopefully when we get closer to the ground, that will fix itself. Look, there you go. It's trying to load some kind of texture, but it's not really happening. We're only falling at three meters a second, so. It's painfully slow. Speed it up a bit. There we go. on the planet 0.6G which means we can get a bit of height on our jump see almost looks like the ice texture right, I wasn't timing how long that took to get down but I've been recording for about 15 minutes so I'd say um, a good 7 or 8 minutes to get down from up there anyway, you can see it's um, on the horizon there. And as you can see, like I said, it's the bare minimum. So we're um, in the future update, I hope, that this will be a lot more populated with interesting details on the planets. You know, rock outcroppings, cliffs, canyons, maybe, um, obviously wooded areas like we've seen in the um, 
I just hope with the with the teaser trailers that they've been accurate in showing us um, ex exactly how it's going to look. But I, I know that they say, "Oh, it's alpha. It's oh, this is um, subject to change and the rest of it." But um, it all looks very much like in-game footage to me. So I mean, high hopes for for that anyway. But all that's what I wanted to show you really. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who hasn't heard about the source code already, where to get it. Um, the only thing I would say is if you're going to download it, don't be using Internet Explorer, use uh, Chrome or Firefox or something like that. Um, they're the only ones that can really handle such a big download. I didn't have any problems downloading it and as soon as I downloaded it, I was able to use it out of the box as it was. You need to own Space Engineers to play it and... Um, you will have to have Steam running in the background, which you'll have to start up yourself and then load the game from the file, the application file that's in the con in the um, bin 64 folder if you're playing on the 64-bit system, or just the bin folder of the installation folder if you're playing on the 32-bit system. Now, if you are on the 32-bit system and you try to load a planet of any size, um, I've done a bit of testing in it. And I don't know what that was, and um, you'll find that you won't won't have the memory uh, needed. You it will load the planet for you, um, and you can come down and land on it, and you can load. Um, you can use your spawn ship that you already would have spawned in with if you have one. Um, if you try to load blueprints up, like here, I'm in creative. If I I can add stuff away here now, uh, I can add blocks in or whatever I want. If you try to load a blueprint. Um, or add an object to the world basically it will tell you you do not have enough memory um, it's just yeah, that's a warning so maybe try try it with smaller planets I was going from 40 to 50 to 60k planets um, maybe if you try maybe 8 8 to 10 12 maybe if you're on a 32-bit system then that that might help because it'd be a shame for people just to dabble around there's still some very cool things to do, and you know that's what it was. It was it's the it's the light, just where the the sun is moving around on the other side of the planet. It's just causing this light the light to glitch a bit, and you can see the glitches in the textures and the patching of the of the ground. But anyway, enough said. That's all I really wanted to show people. Um, I hope you found it interesting. It wasn't a very massively exciting video, but. Um, I'm very excited about planets and just to even get a chance to just mess around and maybe build a base on here or do something, just uh, maybe role play it a bit, see how we get on. It might give us some inspiration for some new things to do in Space Engineers. So anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.